Hey folks, uh, we are back at it again up in the mountains of Vermont. And you know, it is that time of year where the mosquitoes and the black flies are out in full force. And it does not matter how much bug spray you're wearing, they don't care. <laughs> it's actually not all that cold out today, but I've got to wear my hood to keep them out of my ears and off the back of my neck. Man, it's brutal. So the plan today is we're going to be walking this old road that goes right up over the top of the mountain. It's beautiful. It's got stone walls lining both sides. You can see here. And there are a few cellars along the way that we're going to stop at and do some metal detecting. Uh, but I've had permission here for a while and I've metal detected these places in the past. We found shoe buckles, we found old colonial coins. Uh, but the plan today is to walk in the fields along the wall because I read a little blurb in a local history book that this road was used for moving troops during the Revolutionary War. Now, my hope is that maybe they parked off on the side in one of these farmers' fields to rest, maybe camp the night. Somebody ran off to uh, use the facilities and dropped a few things. I don't know, we'll see. So we're gonna walk uh, both sides of this road. We're gonna go up a ways, hit a couple cellars, come on back down the other side and uh, see what we can find. All right, well, we have arrived to the first of the cellars that we're going to be visiting today. I did detect from where we started to here on the side of the road, nothing. A couple shotgun shells, that's about it. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time here and then we're gonna move on, detect through the field until we hit the next cellar. All right, we have a, just a mid-tone, just a 45. I had to guess I'd say that's a shotgun shell, but given where we are, you never know. Well, here it is. No, definitely not. Check it out. Is that just not the smallest little pewter spoon? That's incredible. It has fallen apart due to the, uh, the pewter composition here. It does not last very well in the ground, but that's for sure what that is. A little bowl to a little little spoon is probably, you know, like a little serving spoon. Beautiful. All right, it's a piece of history. Everyday life back then. Let's back it up, keep going. All right, well, targets have been so slow at this first sight. This is my really only second good tone here. And I think after this one, we're gonna call it and move on along through the fields. Uh, it's not that high, it's only in the 70s. And for some reason, all the nails kind of reading up there today, so we'll see what it is. Oop, there it is. There it is. It's a silver plated button. Any designs on it? Yeah, there is a design on there. What is that? I think that's a design. Let me get it cleaned off here. For sure. Look at that. That's an eagle. Incredible. Alright, there is definitely some writing on this. Foxbury? There's some writing up here, too. You make that out? Sorry, I'm shaking a little bit here. Um, I don't know what this is. I mean, it's clearly a button. It has this kind of interesting shape filled in in the back. Let me get this cleaned up a little bit, see if I can make the writing out. All right, well, I got it cleaned up enough to be able to read what I think says Manchester. The N is missing, but I think that's what it is. Uh, Manchester Co., and we have the eagle, of course. And at the bottom, which I thought said Foxbury, I believe is Roxbury. Um, so I'm just going to very cautiously say that this is not a military button, but probably a very pretty civilian button. Um, but if I learn something else, I will certainly let you know. I also think it's probably all silver, not silver plated. You know, silver with a lead back, which is incredible. 
All right, that's a good find, whatever it, whatever it may be. All right, let's keep going. Well, I am in a field, so this find, uh, at first glance, doesn't make much sense, but it does for sure. We have a big man-sized thimble here, and uh, from what I understand, these were used in the fields when sewing up bags of goods. Now, this was, at one time, a working farm. You know, we're high up in the mountains, so the things that would grow is somewhat limited. It's probably, you know, oats, barley, or rye, or potatoes, or something. They would have used this to push the needle through the, the big, uh, you know, bags of goods, and somebody, uh, somewhere along the way, dropped it. Hopefully, they were able to finish the day without pricking their finger. That's pretty cool. An old tool from 200 years ago for bagging up goods in the field. Probably not dropped by a soldier, but <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? All right, let's keep going. Sounds like a red squirrel's pretty upset with me here. You see him? I don't see him. He's up there somewhere. Red squirrels are notoriously fierce. Far more fierce than their larger cousin, the gray squirrel. And they'll drop pine cones on you and yell at you and get in scraps with other animals. Pretty funny. Let's keep going. All right, I've just got a beautiful high tone here. It's only a 78, but I don't know, it could be anything. Let's see. Oh, look at that. It was stuck to my finger when I put my hand in there. That's awesome. Man, that's uh that is a buckle. You know what I Man, that's a mystery to me. I've never seen one quite like this. At first when I saw it, I thought maybe it was a shoe buckle. But this doesn't look broken. This looks all together, all there. Though this and this look different lengths. Interesting. Well, whatever it is, it's a colonial era buckle of some kind. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, I'll definitely take that. That would have been beautiful, shiny, and golden when it was new. Used for whatever it was used for. I, I assume horse tack, but you never do know. Awesome. All right, let's keep moving. All right, well, we have made our way from that first cellar through about a quarter mile of woods, which at that time was fields, and we've made our way to this second cellar, is up on that hill up there uh, and there is one more cellar up the road but it's taking me longer than I had expected to kind of zigzag my way through these fields so instead of going to that cellar we're gonna cross the road and head back uh, for what it's worth all of the homes are on this side of the road I don't know what's on that other side it, it was all fields at one time I don't think there were any structures over there uh, so we'll see we'll see what that means for us today as we metal detect our way back so we're gonna spend some time here see what we can find and we'll cross over. <clears throat> well, this was just a low tone. I wouldn't have suspected it's a coin. I'm still not sure it is because it's not very round. I mean, it's roundish. I don't know. It sure feels like a coin. Not a whole lot of detail on there. Hmm. The corner's already starting to uh, chip off a bit. Let me get my toothbrush out. Work on it a little bit, see if I can get some uh, detail off of it. All right, well, I'm going to say that it's a coin. Again, it's not its not really perfectly round, but, um, you know, being in the ground for a couple hundred years does that. No detail, you know, because of the, the area it rang up on the metal detector, I'm going to say it's probably British. Coin's a coin. I'm happy. Let's throw it in the pack, see if we can find some more. Right, well, I have uh, another button here, I'm pretty sure. But man, does it look intricate. So, 
you can see there's a little bit of gold plating down here. We flip it over. There's the shank. Do you see this? There's super fancy lace work or something. And actually, whoa, looks like there's a whole bunch of bumps on the face. All right, I'm not going to clean this with my fingers. Let me get my toothbrush out. See if we can clean this very carefully. Look at that mosquito's trying to bite me while I'm cleaning this button. Wow, look at that. A ton of guilt still there. Incredible. All right, well, it would appear either they had some money or there was a very well-to-do lady in the house. I don't know, maybe men would wear this kind of button. I'm not sure I would, but times were different back then, I suppose. All right, let's keep going. We have uh, yet another button I went in one of these old fields and it doesn't appear as though there's anything on here on the front at least but as I look at the back see that all that stuff this one's got string on it it says London Let's see if we can figure out what the rest of it is here London guilt well, it's pretty standard text. Let you know uh, that it was gold plated at one point, long, long ago. Um, we find a lot of buttons. People were hard working back then, working out in these fields. They were popping buttons left and right. All right, it's a good find. Let's keep going. So I was detecting around. Uh, we're in a field right now. I spotted something which caught my eye, and I started to panic a little bit because they looked like graves. Uh, but it's not graves, but it's pretty cool anyway. So the white of the quartz here caught my eye, and then I noticed this, which from the right angle over here I thought might have been a pair of graves. But what I think happened was this enormous uh, birch tree must have started as a little sapling in a little crack in this rock, grew, and then over time busted that apart. Uh, which is really pretty amazing when you think about all it took was time and a little sapling to absolutely destroy this huge stone. Um, there's, you know, there's examples of that everywhere. Every, everywhere you've got a stone with some cracks in it, you know, moss and dirt gets in there and then saplings grow, but pretty cool. All right, let's keep detecting. Oh, we just got a scream and target here. If I had to guess... So that's a beer can, but uh, let's see. Oh, I see something down here. It's not a beer can. No way. Look at this. Oh my God. You have got to be kidding me. Out in the middle of this field, nothing around. Incredible brass. Colonial era shoe buckle. Look at that. Wow. Oh man, I wish the uh, inside was in here. The pin must have been iron. Fortunately, it didn't survive its stay in the ground. Oh, let's see if anybody else is in here. <gasps> There's more in here. What is it? Uh, yeah, that's some of it, actually. This inside piece must have been iron. I think that this is iron. Um, I'll, I'm going to recheck again, but this is definitely the inside of it here. There would have been two little spikes and a loop thing here. Man, that is awesome. Man, all right, well, let's spend a little bit more time in this field and then move along here. All right, we are almost back to where we started, and we're at the corner of one of these stone walls. This is the... Stonewall 
you know, lining the road. And then this goes off into uh, the woods. It would have been the border of two fields. And I was just detecting around here and I got a button and there's a couple little iron targets out here. Who knows, this could have just been a dumping ground, could have been a place where people had picnics or something, but we're gonna spend some more time here. I don't know, see what this might be. All right, I'm on my knees here, on the ground, digging a hole. Um, I'm starting to get some iron targets. I then get a very unassuming mid-tone. Probably a shotgun shell, right? Dug it, let me show you. And it wound up being this, which is just a very thick cast pewter button. Isn't completely out of the ordinary out here. Anybody could have been wearing these. This could have been homemade. And then cover up the hole, recheck it as you do. And I got another pewter button. Again, didn't raise my blood pressure. Uh, but then I looked at it. Check this out. Am I seeing things? Or is that a script USA? The button is just absolutely falling apart. I don't know what's going to happen when I spray it with this water here. I hope it's going to wash the dirt off and leave the USA intact. Oh my gosh. That's exactly what it is. Look at that. USA. You've got to be kidding me. This is a Continental Army button from the American Revolutionary War. Oh man. The Continental Army was made up by the 13 states when the Revolutionary War broke out. And uh, uh, I guess this, look at that. Is there still freaking string still in the shank? I am not touching that. Man, look at that. Again, this would have been on the uniform of a soldier in the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War. They must have been walking this path, heading over the mountain to fight some British. Absolutely incredible. They must have been wearing this one too. There's no insignia on this, but they were both in the same spot. So I'll, I will keep them together so we don't lose that history. Absolutely insane. A Continental Army USA button. Wow, what else is there to say? That is incredible. All right, well, despite my best efforts, I got eaten alive today. <laughs> The bugs are just unreal this time of year. The finds were few and far between, which makes sense because, you know, we were metal detecting fields and not focusing on a cellar hole. But man, today is a day to remember with that USA button. The Continental Army came through here. They did something in one of these fields and one of them lost a button and uh, we were able to find it a couple hundred years later. Absolutely incredible. Let's look at everything we found today. Now some of these things came from the fields and some of these things came from the two home sites that we visited today. Um, I've written down where everything came from so that I can keep it all, all together. And when I find things, I kind of keep them all in the same container and then I write the GPS point of where they all came from um, to try to keep everything nice and organized. We found this enormous, beautiful shoe buckle. This I'm starting to think as time goes on that this might actually be a fragment of a shoe buckle as well even though the ends are nice and rounded I'm not really sure we did find a fragment of a knee buckle here just a piece of one we have our pewter spoon thimble one two three four five six seven eight nine ten flat buttons coat buttons cuff buttons we did find one big musket ball I didn't show this because the target was not very good but I did get it out and it is a huge musket ball that made impact with something we did get one copper coin it is not in great shape, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's what it is. We have our silver button with an eagle on it. I'm going to go home and do some research. If I do find out, I will let you know. If you happen to have some information on it, 
please let me know in the comments section. Um, and then, of course, the star of the show today, the Continental Army USA button, which is a first for me, probably a last for me. They, uh, they don't come up very often, and it's just an incredible piece of American history. All right, folks. Well, that's it for me today. I'm going to get out of the mountains uh, while I still have some blood left in me. And uh, I want to thank you again for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time.